know, I really like when Jay Powell came in and over time morphed to the notion we're going to watch what's going on and make our decisions as time and condition uh, necessitates. But yet we're using a 90s model of three eases and a pause. You know, in the mid-90s, there was no ECB, there were no negative interest rates, there was even no euro. The ECB didn't come into existence until June of 98 when we were all at the show watching Truman Show and Armageddon. Is this the right way to proceed? Uh, yeah, first of all, I would pity Jay Powell because his office is in a building full of economists and their message is just sinking in, into him and we're getting a little less of the plain spoken uh, chair that we thought we'd get at the beginning. Uh, second thing, you're exactly right. Uh, they haven't gotten the memo that the United States is part of a global economy. Yes, trade's more important to our trading partners than to us, but it's still important to us. And that matters for the efficacy of Federal Reserve policy. Now, it, it, let's take this a step farther. Uh, the liquidity issues that seem to be, at least for the t time being, under control really are a function of uh, what we did after uh, the crisis with Dodd-Frank, but maybe more importantly, we're finally getting a feedback loop through debt. All this issuance of T-bills with the structure and plumbing smaller is going to be an ongoing issue, don't you think? Yeah, I think there are two separate issues. The one is sort of the climate, and the climate is if you got six trillion, sixteen trillion dollars of negative sovereign debt abroad, that's pulling down U.S. yields. You can't explain a ten-year Treasury at 180 based on the current condition of the U.S. economy. The second part is about the resilience of financial markets in an environment in which intermediation is 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 shrinking, in which the big banks hold reserves, they don't use them, and it's just tougher for the Fed to get their liquidity pumped through the whole uh, plumbing of the financial system. You know, Vincent, I, I continue to look towards Europe and to some extent Japan. The Bank of Japan, of course, has their announcement tonight, tomorrow. But in the final analysis, we've seen quite an interesting rise in rates in Europe, and I do believe that if they are reversing their policies, that will definitely be more of a tsunami in the global financial markets than this third ease. Maybe the Fed should consider keeping it in their pocket. Uh, I think they're too far over the board not to jump into the pool right now. Uh, when 95% pricing of, of policy ease is there, it becomes self-fulfilling. I think you're right, though. If the global economy changes, if the European economy looks better, uh, then that will be consequential everywhere. And that goes back to the point. Trade matters more to our trading partners than to us. The trade deal is more important for Europe and Japan than it is for us. And finally, uh, the last issue I want to bring up is this morning GDP. Listen, 1.9 isn't terrific, but it is terrific considering all the negativity and all the pushback around the globe regarding uh, the policies and strategies of trade and ongoing issues with regard to U.S. economy. Your thoughts on today's number? The important thing about today's number, 1.9 percent may not sound terrific, but it's sustainable. We couldn't be growing at 3 percent like we la uh, were last year in an environment in which our population isn't going up much and we're not generating productivity. 2 percent in the neighborhood, that's sustainable. Thank you.